This is the Durston Gear X Mid One Person Tent. This is the most requested Dan, hold on, I hold have on, ever hold on, had hold on, man, hold on, on this channel. I just cannot take you seriously right now. You are wearing jeans. This is a hiking backpacking channel. What on earth are you doing, man? Emmett, we're in my backyard. I didn't have to hike miles. I mean, seriously, look. There's a trampoline right here. There's a pitch back right here. I got a fire pit right there. My house is up there. There's a tree right here. I mean, seriously. And I've also got my winter white legs. So there's that. I didn't really want to blind everybody on camera. So. All right, man, let's just get this thing set up. Sounds good. Oh, this is gonna look so good. This B-roll, the music, I can see it now. Hey, you're one to talk, by the way. Vans, you don't hike in those, they're not even tied. I'm not the one that has to be on camera. All right, this is for all of you who have requested this tent, the hundreds of people that have requested this tent. By far the most requested tent for me to review, to use ever on this channel. So I gave in, I picked it up, uh, got it, and brought it to Big Bend National Park in Texas and I'm officially a believer. So you could end this video literally right now. We'll see you on the next one. No, you're gonna watch this video because I need the watch time, okay? I need the ad revenue. I need you guys to sit through all the ads on this video so me and Emmett can make more videos. So I think one of the most intriguing things about this tent is that it is unbelievably easy to set up. This. I don't know, this might actually be the easiest tent that I have to set up. Just watch this. Okay, so this tent is also really unique. So I will have to stake one corner out like this. Normally with any other tent that I've got, standard procedure, standard Dan Becker procedure is to stake this corner right here, and then I'm gonna go to the opposite corner for good tension, and then I'm gonna stake those corners for good tension. They don't want you to do that in this tent. It's really interesting. So instead of going over there, you gotta go right here. Just pull it until you see a little bit of tautness, right, like that. Is tautness a word? I think so. It's a word. If it's not, we just made it up. <laughs> then you're gonna make your way over here, like this. You're gonna pull it so that it's like at a 90, 90 degree angle, a little right angle action. Look, this is geometry class right here. And then right here, all you're gonna do is try to square it out or in this case, rectangle it out. Now, because this is a trekking pole tent, it requires trekking poles. So what's unique about this one is other trekking pole tents, you gotta like unzip the door or get underneath it to try to put a trekking pole in. This one is you just find the vent right here. This is the ventilation for the top of the tent. You go with the uh, handle down, so pole tip up. And then right here, there's a grommet. There we go. Just like that. And then obviously you're gonna put a trekking pole in on the opposite side. Exactly the way you just did. That's literally all you do to set up this entire tent. Now the initial uh, setup, there is a separate inner portion of the tent, so it's a double wall tent, which I already set it up one time. You gotta kinda connect it at first. But once that's done, you never need to do it again. Uh, you can bring it out separately, but there's really no point unless you wanna have like, uh, like a stargazer night. <laughs> And you want the rain fly off. And if you want to do that, they sell a little kit to be able to do that. But what's really great about this particular tent that you're not going to see a lot of in other uh, trekking pole tents is that the angle is like the same all the way around. So it's almost like a teepee style tent. Now why that's important is because um, in the wintertime, if it snows, that snow is just going to slide right off all four sides. So you don't have to worry about any of the sides caving in on you. And then also it's uh, angle just enough so that like if there's a windstorm for instance um, it's not going to be like straight up and down where the wind is going to blow in on it it's going to angle just enough to be really storm worthy we can totally attest to that because in texas how was that windstorm emmett uh, i didn't sleep a wink he didn't <laughs> he didn't sleep at all how fast do you think those winds were like 40 miles per hour at least i would say 40 maybe even 50 mile an hour as a matter of fact the other guy that we were with his tent literally snapped his pole going down the center of his tent snapped in half from that wind so this thing was a champ didn't even budge on me whatsoever also all of the corners are adjustable around the entire tent so 
you can loosen and tension as you need to. And that's really helpful. Like if it rains a lot overnight and the nylon starts to sag, you can wake up and tension the line. So that's really nice. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I count this one already? Whatever, seven-ish, eight maybe. So just eight sheets of material. <laughs> It's not a lot of seams for what you're gonna see on the inside, but we'll get to the inside in a second. Uh, also, this is a really thick denier nylon. I think it's 20D, I wanna say. We're gonna put the specs on screen. As I always tell you, I'm not good at specs. All right, if I did have to nitpick again, I would say that the zipper isn't the easiest to open with one hand, but that's not a bad thing because it's a waterproof zipper. So if you're inside the tent, you gotta reach forward. It's just a little bit, tougher to zip and unzip, but that's typical with waterproof zippers. But I would actually say that's more of an attention to detail because uh, you're not chintzing on um, storm worthiness, you know, actually what you want a tent for. So to protect you from the elements. I mean, it's one thing to be like, oh, I want a really easy to open zipper uh, and it's gonna be lightweight. But then you get out there and it's raining on you and you're like, oh, I'm glad I've got a hefty zipper. That's kind of the thought process I think around this whole tent. So even here where the trekking poles, where the tip of the trekking pole is at, it's very, very thick, very, very durable. There's a grommet there to make sure it doesn't poke through. Uh, they got vents here with Velcro that have a little bar that you can ventilate with. Uh, down here at the corners where you're staking out the tent, where the guy line attaches to the corner of the tent is really, really thick and it's triple stitched. So there's a lot of attention to detail. They're not, giving you the most ultralight tent, although it is a very ultralight tent, it's what you need. Also, there's plenty of guy line points here. Uh, this, this isn't the guy line spot, but this is a place where you can guy out the tent. You can, you can stake it out here with other stakes if you want a little bit more interior for like the vestibule, that kind of thing. They include uh, two guy lines here. Both are made out of Reflectix, which is just a reflective cord so that when you shine a headlamp at it, it's gonna reflect back at you so you're not like tripping over it, so that's kinda nice. But man, they included plenty of guy out points for this thing. In that wind, I didn't need to include any of the guy out points in setting it up. It totally withstood that wind, and it probably was like that for three, four hours solid. The interior of the tent, like if you look at this tent like from the side, it looks like normal, but then you start to kind of look at it from different angles, and it's, it's just something looks off. But in reality, all of that is working together to make it work for the best for you. Anyway, I know it's hard to understand, but what I mean by that is, so like the trekking poles aren't straight down the middle. They're sort of off like this. The interior of the tent isn't like end to end. It's actually cockeyed like this. And that's to utilize the space, to utilize the trekking pole, the geometry behind this tent. Very, very well thought out. As a matter of fact, these vestibules are humongous. Like the amount of gear that you could put at each end is amazing for a one person tent. So you don't even need two vestibules, but you got them. You hear all the road noise, all the beeping, all the motorcycles, all the stuff. We're in my backyard, Emmett. I still don't know if that's an excuse for jeans. <laughs> What's really cool about this tent also is that not a lot of tents do this. I mean, very few tents do this, is that it's essentially reversible. And what I mean by that is uh, the night where it was really windy, the wind was coming from one direction and it was pounding like where my head would be, let's say over here. And it was pushing like this on the tent. So it was kind of bothering me. I was like, man, this sucks. So all I had to do was <laughs> flip my sleep setup around inside of the tent. And now my head's over there and it's pushing here, which I got this a lot more distance on it away from me but there's no difference from you, your perspective inside of the tent because it's literally reversible. The head end and the foot end is completely identical. This is the sleeping pad I used. This is 25 by 78, the sleeping pad I used in Texas. So um, my concern was, was this thing gonna fit in there? Yes, it does. It absolutely does because the uh, insert where you actually have your tent is I think 30 inches wide, so. Let me show you uh, this inside of the tent so you can see just how much room you've got. So this uh, trekking pole actually is goes in here <laughs> around this little uh, shot cord here. So you can kind of, you know, open up the interior a little bit more. The interior is totally reversible. The corner of that end goes 
jets out that way and the corner of this end on that side jets out that way so there is a spot to put gear like on the floor of the tent if you want to and then there are pockets at each uh, end of the tent as well there's a little pocket here and there's also a little pocket here those are the only pockets in the whole tent to be able to put gear would have been nice to possibly have maybe one more but you know i i bring i bring a lot of stuff with me uh little odds and ends so there's that headroom is decent uh when you've got the vestibules zipped shut this will open up a little more because it toggles right here and you can also stake out the vestibules with an extra stake two extra stakes obviously uh, it only needs four stakes to set up but six if you want to have a little bit more room in the vestibules which i don't really think you need but I did though in that windstorm, so it was helpful. This is one of the more awkward shots that we've had with our new cameraman here. <laughs> you should see him right now. <laughs> He's totally bent in. Anyway, okay. So you can see what I mean by it just being like a like a like a rhombus. <laughs> the the sleeping pad is like this, but this corner, there's a place to put your gear here. And this end, it, it there's not. And literally if I flip around, it's exactly the same way. So I would normally feel like I'm going to be super claustrophobic in a one-person tent. I, I did not at all feel claustrophobic in this tent. It was it was totally fine. There's a little bit of space here on the side of the 25-inch wide pad to be able to throw some stuff. Not much. You're probably not going to put anything there, especially if you got a bigger sleeping bag that's probably going to droop over to the sides anyway. You're really only going to put your gear at the bottom and the top and then maybe some in the pockets. we got those huge vestibules. For a one-person tent, the interior is a little skinny, but the actual tent is, is you know, it totally makes up for it as far as vestibule space uh, with that big footprint. So essentially, this is a minimalist tent, so I don't expect it to really have a lot of, you know, pockets and, you know, stuff and doodads and whatchamajusets and... This morning he told me that I was fired for using weird words. And <laughs> now he's... He's been fired like eight times today already, so. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's a minimalist shelter, so you're not going to see a ton of bells and whistles on it. Um, but if I had to grade this tent, like one being like the worst tent I've ever used in my entire life and 10 being like the greatest ever. Oh, man, I would. I don't know. That's a tough one. This is probably this is probably nine or 10, honestly, of like trekking pole tents. This is super good. This is probably one of the best to try. I'm excited to actually, I know it when I'm excited to use this again, I think, oh, I can't wait to take that out again. This is definitely one of those tents where you're like, I can't wait to take this tent out again. And for the price, like this is a, this is a budget tent. I mean, in, compared to other tents on the market, it's like 230 bucks. But there is one huge problem with this tent. It is never in stock. So if you want this tent, you gotta get on their email list. I'll put a link to their website in the description below to check it out, jump on there. But even then you're gonna be sitting on a waiting list for a while. So that is the Durston XMID one person tent. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did hit that like button, also subscribe for more. Make sure you hit the bell notification so that I can send you a video and stalk you. Like when your phone dings and then you look down and you see it's me, that's me, that's me looking right at you saying, why aren't you watching my videos? You need to be watching my next video right now. Just do it. Watch the next video. Bell notification now. And we'll see you on the next one.